Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me here today. Walter here at the workbench. Today, I wanted to touch on the topic of workbenches and work holding. How big do they need to be? How fancy do they need to be? And how high? So, as you see, Things are a little different here now. What I did was I brought out this laminated top that I made a few years back. I made this as a job site workbench. Something I could toss in the car and be able to plane boards down on cabinet installs, trim, whatever. All it was with some construction grade, probably spruce, and some fir, maybe some hemlock, I, I don't even know. Don't even remember what's said on the tag. Construction grade lumber is not extremely dry, so over the years it has dried and moved and twisted. It's pretty stable now. All I had to do today was take a few wispy shavings on a few high spots. But that's a workbench. Put it on two sawhorses and you're good to go. A few clamps, a piece of wood as a straight edge for a stop. You've got a planing bench if you need to. You can also clamp down a hand screw. That's what these are called. You clamp this down and now you've got a vise that you can put boards in vertically. So you can do edging, jointing. Work holding can be as simple as a nail in the top or a screw in the top. Something to stop the wood from moving. You can be as simple or as complex as you'd like. Don't need dog holes, but you could drill dog holes in here so that you could use a hold fast. That's what this is. That's a hold fast. So if you wanted to drill holes through this, you could there you could use the hole fast. So, next comes the question, well, how high should a workbench be? Well, for a while there, I was planing down on the surface of my Joburg workbench, and if the board was under an inch thick, I was starting to stoop over and bend my back more than I needed to. By adding this slab to the top of my workbench now, it is so comfortable. I don't know if you can see the difference, but I can feel the difference. My hand fits the plane, my arm is right in line with the wood with just a little bit body motion, you know, bending. Just a little bit. Okay? So what is that height? Well, it, how tall are you? Are you taller from, are, you know, is your waist at the center line of your body? Or do you have a longer torso? Shorter legs? Longer legs? Shorter torso? We're all different. So, the average height of a bench typically is at about 35 or 36 inches, mostly because that's the height of table saws. All right? People use their workbench as an off-feed table for table saws. And that's okay. But it doesn't take much to make auxiliary devices to raise things up for dovetailing okay for dovetailing you would want a vise that brings it up higher to to your arm okay so when you're cutting you're not cutting like this you're cutting nice and level okay when you're chiseling you may want to be a little lower so that you don't have to raise your hammer arm all the way up. 
You see, it all depends. Now, where does the name workbench come from? Well, it's not a work table. We don't call them work tables. We call them work benches. So why should it be three feet off the ground if it's a work bench? The old work benches were down low. They were generally about knee height. You could sit on them and work. And wouldn't that be nice to be able to sit and work more often? Trust me, I just got back from the doctor and yeah, you're going to miss your knees one day. But in the olden days, a cobbler who made shoes, he sat at his cobbler's bench. That was a sit down. A shingle maker, a chair maker. Most of the time they were sitting at a shave horse or as is known in German, Schnitzelbank, bank, bench. There you go. So we wouldn't dream of trying to make draw knife or spoke shave work, either chair parts or shingles high up here on a workbench. We would sit down at the shave horse. The other thing too is, every trade had its own bench. Our problem today, in 2019, is we're trying to make every workbench do everything we want it to do. And that just is not the case. So, Build your bench so that it fits in with any power tools you may have. And I'm sorry, that is the norm. Everybody has some sort of power tools. And if you don't, then you're a true hand tool woodworker and I applaud you. I still like my table saw. Why? It's my pigtailed apprentice, okay? It works when I ask it to work without having to feed it. Well, electrons maybe, but... So once you build your workbench to fit into your modern day workshop, then just customize it as you go for the tasks at hand. Some people talk about adding a Moxon vise so that you can hold work here, comes in, some Moxon vices bringing the work up higher for detail work or like I said before for, for dovetailing. I've even seen benches on top of benches. So like this, it's a workbench on top of a workbench. And as for the work holding, the sky is the limit. You can, you can simply use screws properly placed in the top. You can screw them down or lift them up for different thickness wood so that you can have some place to hold the wood. You can also use holes in the top and then add a few hold fasts. That would work. Clamps are the quickest and easiest and cheapest. These happen to be some old Jorgensen's, but you can pick up clamps anywhere these days. And they're not expensive, five to seven dollars, you can get a small clamp to be able to clamp wood so that you can plant. Another way would be to take a piece of wood and I would probably use plywood and make an adjustable stop on the end here. 
couple of screws, and then you can lift it up and down for different thickness stock, and if you don't want it there at all, you loosen it and it drops down below the surface of your workbench. There's dozens, hundreds, if not thousands of ways to hold your work. And as I mentioned, every trade, every trade will have its own techniques. Whether you're a guitar builder, violin maker, or whether you're making wooden shoes, or just some small occasional boxes, jewelry boxes, picture frames. Framers had their own benches because they would include an, a device called a sticking board so that you could hold molding stock while making profiles with molding planes. Everything was customized and sometimes they were even customized to specific jobs and may never be used again. I've heard stories of people who buy plantation homes down south that were all hand built and the owner of the plantation wanted custom made moldings and so when the joiner left the job the toolbox filled with the planes he made for that job was, was stored up in the attic. So oftentimes you'll find that toolbox in an old home and it shouldn't be removed because those molding planes made all the trim in that house. It's a historical record and unfortunately over time the states get auctioned off and they clear out the attics and that history is lost forever unless the joiner put his name on the planes and sometimes stamped in the, the job, the job name. So that's about it for today. Getting there. Thin stock is a little tricky to plane, especially quarter sawn. But what I like to do, I like to work one side until I get a reasonably flat finish and then plane it over and do the other side. Leave it set a couple days on sticks or stack vertically like this and that way the air goes around it and then come back and finish playing it. But that's about it everybody. Hope this was helpful, useful, maybe entertaining and uh, I hope that you're subscribed. If not, find that subscribe button and click it. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, don't. <laughs> it's that simple. But uh, most importantly, head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. Walter out. <laughs>